Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to church. Uh, this is uh, a new experience for me. For some of you, where I'm preaching to the seats, and y'all are all amening me from the house out there. So, welcome aboard, everybody. I want to I want to take just a few moments uh, talk about where we are and what we're doing in this. I guess before we do that, let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just love you and praise you, and we just thank you for this opportunity. Father, Lord, you, as our creator, have given us an ability, Father, to have a creative way of thinking, and I know social media is, is we, don't, we don't see it as, as creative and going live on Facebook as creative, but Father, you've had us all day creating path and plans to continue ministry, to continue getting the gospel message out, and continue encouraging the believers and so father tonight i pray for your anointing i pray that the holy spirit will speak to all of us and just create a a calmness in our life a peace in our life during this time one that gives us a confidence in jesus christ i love you and praise you amen amen so amen well uh, I have what scripture qualifies as two or more here tonight, so I have two camera people. If you're coming in, you're coming in on one of the Facebooks, either Bethel Assembly of God or Sunday Morning Church. We're doing it on both so that if one fails, the other captures, and Lord willing, both of them will capture. Uh, we, for the next 14 days, next two weeks, most expectedly, we'll be do doing online sermons and communication with you, uh, keeping in accordance with the recommendations the governor of the state of Texas has put into place as of today. Many of you know that the counties have also instituted this. Uh, we know that Dimmick County has put a new ordinance into place under their emergency management plan. Every county has one of these. Uh, we are waiting on the rest of the counties that we work in to just follow suit with that. And it is that they want no more than 10 people gathered in one place at one time. And as you may know, most of the church services are above that. So what we've done for the safety of the, the people that attend church, safety of the pastors and the staff, is is we're moving to an online forum so that we can continue ministry we are not uh detached in any way we have phones and those phones we can text we can we can call and if you need us please don't hesitate but give us a call so why why do it like this why not just uh spit in the face of the law and continue on and have church and and uh, why not do that? Because that was my first inclination as well. And, and, and then, of course, we studied in Bible study about pride, and I keep realizing I'm having to deal with my own pride issues. And, and the Lord, as Nebuchadnezzar says in the book of Daniel, he has the ability to humble us. And I just kept referring as church leadership come together to deal with how we were going to continue in this, I kept saying, I think, let me just pray about it. Let me seek the Lord, get some wisdom on this, in which all the church leadership has done this. This is, you've got to know to take a, take a pastor, take a preacher, take, take any of our workers and not allow them to do what God's called them to do is, is difficult, but it's not that we're not doing what God's called us to do. It's just that we're having to find a different way to do it. And, and that's okay. That's good. Um, as I was mowing grass today, um, I, was, I was seeking the Lord, I was worshiping, um, had my worship music on my headphones, I'm having a good time seeking the Lord about this, and Father, just need your wisdom. We've heard about all of the laws that they're putting into place, all of the ordinances that have been adopted. Uh, what do you want us as your, as your children, as your, as your church here, what do you want us to do? And he began to speak to me about things that I have been studying on in his word. He began to, he began to reveal to me every sermon for about the past six months that 
I know in Carrizo, which this is typically Carrizo's church night, every sermon that has been in place has been one that was of encouragement about standing firm in your faith, about trusting God, and about ministering the gospel message. And he just really just, just quietly spoke to me, and he said, you know, that, that it's, it's okay, it's going to be okay, but the believers, in my, in my words, not his, are going to test drive their faith. Believers going to test drive your faith a little while. And it's not that we weren't warned about it because the preaching's been there, the teaching's been there, the, 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 uh, the Spirit has been speaking this continually, continually, continually. It's okay. You know, we, we've often said that we've seen the, the days of house church coming back. We've seen the, the large assemblies having to, having to be dissolved for whatever reason. And we don't know what to tomorrow holds. We don't. We don't. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we have one hope, one promise that we hold to, and that that's the Lord's coming back for His church, and so we want to remain His church. We, whether we congregate or we stay home, we remain His church because the church is not a building. The church is not this the four walls and and the roof that's over me right here. The church is the people, and the people can be the church by being by staying faithful at home. Staying faithful, gathering around your tables, gathering around your living room and, and opening the word of God and, 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 and fathers taking their rightful place in the family and saying we don't have the pastor here but we have the Bible here and we have the Lord here and begin to read and pray with the family. For those that, that the, the head of the household, whoever that might be, to take that rightful position. This is an opportunity that has been afforded us to begin to put our faith into action, to put our, let it take a, 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 a test drive, per se, to where we can, we can just really seek the Lord in this quiet time. We can spend some time doing that. You know, we don't want to spit in the face of the law. And the reason is, 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 is because, you know, Scripture tells us, I believe it's Romans 13, 1. Um, let me flip there. It was on my phone, and that got borrowed from me. That's okay. I'll go there. So it says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. And, and they have posted the judgments for that. Um, and so Scripture talks about us obeying the law, and, and, and we as the church, we are obligated to do that. Now, when they tread across our, our what, what the Word of God says, and they, and they begin to go avidly against that then then we'll rise up but right now what we're talking about is safety because of this virus has nothing to do with fear in our life about this virus we we don't we don't live in a state of fear we don't we don't we don't have this this constant worry about it because when you're a blood-bought child of God that does not exist because you have a covenant from Lord Jesus Christ who said I will heal your disease he said I will keep you I will protect you I will shield you and, and, and so we as a believer as we grow in our in our relationship with the Lord we, we walk away from the fear side of life we walk to the faith side of life and so and so what we're going to do, though, is, is for the safety of everybody and to help put a lid on this virus, we're going to not gather together, as, the, as they've asked, for the next 14 days so that this thing will not gain momentum, but it will begin to fizzle out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we are obligated as a believer to pray, and I hope that you're praying. I hope that you've been praying. I hope that your prayers are not all about you. I hope that your prayers are all about everybody else, uh, the safety of everybody else, for those to be healed that have contracted this. Uh, even if you don't know them, you should be praying for them. Uh, you know, we have a, an obligation uh, to, to, to love those souls out there. Now, we may not like, we don't love their sin, we don't love their lifestyle, but we love their souls because, because everybody has a chance for salvation. You know, in, um, in Matthew 10, 16, 
it gives reference to this, and, and I'm taking the latter part of that verse. It says that we are wise as serpent and innocent as doves. And as church leadership, as, as pastors, we've, we've, you know, we've talked to other pastors. We've, we've received from higher up in authority from us, and we've taken that counsel, and we've made these decisions, and uh, why pray for wisdom if we don't use it? And, and so we're using the wisdom that God has given us, and that wisdom says, let's just stay still for a little bit. As one brother said, that's an extended sabbatical for some of us right there. You know, just take a breath and, and, and don't di take this as, as something that's inoffensive you, but use this time to seek the Lord. Use this time to grow in relationship with the Lord. Use this time to, to do something that you don't normally get to do. Maybe that's sit down and read the Bible for more than 10 minutes. Maybe that's spend some more time in prayer than you've ever spent in prayer. Maybe that's calling your neighbor up and, and saying, how are you doing? Do you have everything that you need? Is there something that I can do for you? Or possibly just saying, may I pray for you? You know, if the Christian's going to rise up, this is a good time to rise up. We don't have to break the law to rise up. What we can do is show love and compassion during this time and not condemnation. You see, condemnation, is it, uh, that's not even scriptural for a believer to have that. We're not, we're not to have condemnation about those that have fear about this virus. What we're to have is to have a love, and a love says that I'm going to gently, I'm going to help you understand that there is a way to ease your fear, and that is only through Jesus Christ. Another reason that we're not going to spit in the face of the law on this, and and, and he, this is one of my, while I was mowing the grass, the Lord just took me there. This is the benefit of reading a lot of scripture every day is he can take you and you can visualize it in your head. But Daniel, the sixth chapter, Daniel, the sixth chapter talks about when Daniel was put in the lion's den. I want to, I want to read a couple of verses just to set the stage for that. The fourth verse says, then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom. But they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. I'm going to tell you that if the church does not begin to cooperate accordingly that the law will react and use everything that we've ever said against us and, and they will begin to to work against the church and I'm gonna tell you what I'm for the church growing and not decreasing and so when, when I read this in Daniel when I went back and refreshed myself in there uh, you, you've got to look at this accordingly who Daniel was you got to know Daniel was a faithful child of God. Daniel will love the Lord. Daniel, will, he, he, he sought the Lord on a continual basis. And they knew that. They knew that he, he lived a life that, that was without fault. And when he lived that life without fault, they couldn't find anything to bring him up on charges about. So they said, we've got to find something to do with his God. And the, ninth, the tenth verse says this, When Daniel knew that the document had been signed... He went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. He had, as he had done previously. For every one of us, I'm going to tell you what, we've sat on the edge of the couch watching it go from 500 to 250 to 50 and today down to 10. When the document was signed, what was your reaction? What did you do? As a Christian, instead of gripe and complain about it, we should go and pray about it. Because it, Daniel prayed three times a day. He went there. Did he change what he was doing in life? No, absolutely not. He began to seek the Lord as he's always sought 
sought the Lord. He had no fear about what they were trying to do. He just went to a private place to pray. You see, we don't have to come to the church to pray. We can pray at home. And maybe the Lord is speaking to you that, hey, maybe this is something to institute every family coming back to the Lord and bringing him back into their home. Maybe it's something that, that, that's happening in your family. It's happening in your neighborhood where people are actually praying in their house and not having to go down to the church to do it. I tell you, when the believers can learn to pray at home, pray in private, you're going to see great miracles begin to happen. As he had done previously. We learn from that. We get wisdom from that. We're not afraid of what the authorities and the governments are doing because we know God has got everything in control. Because we get our wisdom from, from him and not from the world. He's written it in his book for us to obey. He's written, us, written it in his book here for us to, to, to just trust in God. And that's what we're doing during this time. And, and, and I would hope that everybody that, that has been within our teaching and within our, our voice can walk on your spiritual legs for 14 days. I think that it, I think it'll, it'll encourage you. I think it'll give you a confidence that you need for the days to come. You know, we're always worried about how our children will survive in the world once they leave the house because they've been underneath our shelter they've been in our protective reach the whole time but when we 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 turn them into the world what they're going to do is 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 they're going to model what we've taught them and that worries us as parents sometimes but as a as churches I know what the Lord's had me preaching. I know what the Lord's had me teaching. I know how the services have been. And I know that for 14 days you can, you can walk on spiritual legs that he's given you. And you can walk with a confidence without fear of failure, without fear of retreat, without fear of any of this that's going on. In fact, I expect that, that when, we, when we are allowed to congregate again, that there's going to be a multiplication that we don't even understand how because it's not up to us to be good in math it's up to God to be good in math but I'm going to expect that when we can open the doors of the churches again that people are going to flood in not because of the fear but because of the faith that every believer exemplified in everyday conversation this ain't the first time that we've been quarantined this isn't the first time there's been there's been plagues and pandemics go on I've, I've told you I've told you that that everything that is happening now has happened already you can go to the Bible it's our history book it is the place that that we go to find these things to cons to console ourselves and that's what I do uh, you know for the last couple sermons I've, I can't I'm, I just can't get Psalm 103 out of my head and when it says to go back to the teachings of Moses I'm, I, I, it's just a great example that I go back to the Old Testament and I look at the teachings of Moses and I see where we have we have now come around almost a full circle back to that same situation and I know how to present myself I know how to how to handle that situation because history has shown me that and so I went today, and I'm like, all right, Lord, you've shown me Daniel. That's Old Testament. That's, that's Daniel. We've been studying that in Bible study on Sundays, and I hope that you, when we can gather again, you'll join in on that Bible study. I hope that you'll, you'll, you'll just decide that I need more of the Word of God. I need more knowledge of the Word of God. But we've been studying that, and, and, and Daniel has, has just re reinvigorated my faith when I get in and study about a, a young man that was taken into exile and, and, and he stayed faithful to God in a country that did not serve God and it shows us that no matter what goes on in this world we are obligated as a believer to have a relationship with the Lord and to keep it strong. Then the Lord said, I want to show you what, what Moses did in Exodus. When I take a drink of water, y'all say amen, and uh, y'all tag somebody on your Facebook and let them tune in and, and just let them have a little of the word today. Exodus, the 12th chapter, 
talks about another quarantine. I would hope that you have your Bible handy and you're not having to use your phone because that's watching this on Facebook and trying to go there and you're just like, we're just going to have to believe him today. Um, I really believe that every family needs to get them a hard copy Bible. If you don't have one, let me know. Let me help you get one. But the Exodus, the 12th chapter, it, it, it gives us a little bit of a story, and I want to I just give you some of the highlights of it so that you understand that, that you're not being put in your house, and, and this is a shame against you. This is an infringement of your American rights. This is an infringement of your Christian rights to make you stay home. I'm going to tell you something. Praise the Lord if I can stay home. I mean, praise the Lord. There's enough to do there. I will not be bored. I will be busy, but... But, you know, my job doesn't require me to be in contact with lots of people so I can go to work still and praise the Lord for that as well. But in Exodus 12, we see that the children of God were quarantined as well. And you're like, oh, wait a second. I know that story. And they weren't exactly quarantined. No, they were told to go get in the house. They were told to get in the house because if you don't come midnight, you're going to die. Okay, you, your firstborn's going to die, all right? And, and, and so you've got to know this story right here of how God has protected his children by them listening, okay? And the, actually, I want to just briefly look in the 11th chapter, the 9th verse, and it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And I highlighted that because I, I just love it when the Lord has, he knows everything going on. We know nothing, but we try to second guess him. And, and the whole time, the Lord's wonders are being multiplied in the land. This is an opportunity to quit talking and to start listening to what God wants us to do. And as we listen, he will instruct us when we follow instruction, then he is able to multiply the wonders in the land. And that's what we need to see is multiplication going on. But in the 12th chapter, it's, it, this is talking about the plagues that came against Egypt. And, and as you know, the children of Israel, they were, they were in Egypt, and Moses was sent, and he was to be the one to lead them out, but he had to go up against the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh didn't want them to go. Free labor is good labor. And he liked that labor. They were slave labor. They were building his pyramids. They were building his cities. And so he liked that. And he was not going to let these exiles, these slaves, go. And Moses, Moses, he wasn't real confident. So the Lord allowed a series of plagues to come upon Egypt to get the attention of the Pharaoh, to get the attention of people. But not just that, to show his children he was still in control. And so it gets down to the last one, the last and final plague. And that plague was, was, was one that, that said that, that, that the Lord was going to kill the firstborn from the Pharaoh all the way down to the cattle, the sheep, and the goats. You see, the Pharaoh had a firstborn child, and he loved him. And that death sometimes gets attention really quick. But he gave Moses instruction and he said, here's what I want my children to do. Here's what I want them to do. I'm going to look in the 13th verse of the 12th chapter. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. They were told that they were to gather the family together and get inside of the house. They were given instruction to go and get a, a, a lamb without blemish on it, to go get their lamb and get it ready. And they were, they were going to they were going to kill this lamb. And, and you can read all through Exodus, and I'm, 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 I'm accelerating through this, and you can go back and you read this. Please go read this if you've never read this. 
But he said, you go get this lamb, and you have this lamb ready. And on this particular night, when you kill that lamb, you take that blood of that lamb, and you apply it on the doorpost outside of your house. That's, that's the trim around our doors, okay? Our doors have trim. Their doors had post, okay? And so... And so he said you would get some hyssop. Hyssop was a weed. It, was a, it, was, it, it grew there. And, and you would dip it in the blood. So you'd get your paintbrush and you would go out and you would paint the blood on the door frame. And when the death angel, when the, when the plague was coming through, and how did you know the plague was coming? There were screams. There was people screaming because they were realizing people, that their children were dying, that, that their firstborn were dying. And so you hear the screaming in the distance as the plague came. Kind of remind you what's going on sometimes in this world. You hear the scream starts on one side of the world, and it's just now getting louder over here. But, but all of a sudden, you, you hear it come. And he said, he said, if this blood is on the doorpost, he said, that, that's going to pass by you. That's going to pass by you. He says, no plague will befall you to destroy you. A lot of times you'll hear the older Christians and those that have really understood what the blood means. Talk about the blood of Jesus and pleading the blood of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I hope, I hope that there's families watching this either right now or will watch this. And I hope every parent understands how important it is to understand the blood of Jesus and what it's done for us. You see, yes, we, we get caught up in our, in our, in our ways, and, and, and yes, I still, in my prayers, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family because I know that I know that, that is a protection upon them. But I go further than that, and I fully understand that when Jesus died on the cross, he shed blood. And he said his words were, were, were that that blood is the blood that heals us. That that blood is the blood that, that seals the contract. That as a child of God, I don't have to have this fear. As a, as a child of God, that even if I get sick, he is willing and able to heal me. But as a child of God, even if I'm not healed, this life is temporary on this earth. Because he's got an eternal home for me. And so they applied that blood. But then I want to go on. And you, like I said, read the 12th chapter of Exodus. And the 23rd verse says this. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this right as a statute, as a teaching for you and for your sons forever. You see, there's some teachings that need to go on. And I think we have an opportunity right now to teach our children to teach our nieces and nephews, our grandchildren, to teach our friends, our neighbors. We have, a, we have, a, we have an, an, an ability right now to teach them about Jesus Christ. We have an ability to show them of the good things that God's done. We have an ability to... to, to Help them to recollect things in their past that were God moments and to, and to rejoice in them. 
Scripture continually says that Scripture continually says that we're to continue these teachings, to continually tell those within our 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 our, our family. You see, parents are supposed to teach their children about the Lord. They're not to hope they find out on their own in life. I'm going to tell you what: if that's your plan, that your children possibly will find out about the Lord, it's a bad plan. You, as a parent, and I don't care how old they are, you need to call them in and you need to tell them. And I'm right now is a good time. Tell them, no, you need to know about the Lord. I've used this opportunity. I've used this opportunity to uh, talk to so many about Jesus Christ. Never has this been such an easy time for people to accept the Lord. And I encourage you, while you're at home, while you're at home, seek the Lord. Read your Bible. Pray. Get on the phone. Get on Facebook. Text somebody and say, look, I'm praying for you. Don't just say it. Be doing it. Use this opportunity that we have. Not as, not as something that says they've taken away my, my religious ability to assemble, my ability to go down to the church and, and, and to go and hang out with my friends. They've taken it away from me. No, say that God's given me the ability to seek him. And in seeking him, I'm hearing him for the first time in my life. This is a great time to be a believer. There's nothing to fear. Nothing. Everything you want to know what's going on, do not watch all the media. Read the Bible. If you want to stay all time watching media, you're going to stay confused. But if you stay all time reading the Word, you're going to understand everything is coming to, to, to come in the way that the Bible prophesies that it would. Amen. If you're at home, if you're at work, if you're sitting at HEB in line, wherever you are, I want you to bow your head and I want you to pray with me. Father, I thank you. I thank you and I thank you for allowing us to be a part of this time. To be an example during this time of a child of God. Father, I, I pray that every believer will hear you during this still time, quiet time, less chaotic time, that, Father, that they will rejoice in you, they will thank you, they will praise and worship you, and when released, by the local authorities to gather again. That, Father, your multiplication far exceeds anything we were able to do. Because your people, your church, was praying during this time. We love you and praise you, Father. We thank you for your protective hand upon every family, every believer. Father, if they're sick now from another, for whatever it is, Father, Lord, that they may receive healing where they're at. Father, Lord, I pray that you'll remove fear and instill faith in their life. That these words tonight were encouragement and building in their life. We love you, we praise you, and we adore you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to remind you, because yes, there are believers that understand the principle of tithe and offering. On the Facebook sites, there should be a link that you could digitally go and pay your tithe and your offering. Um, if you prefer to pay cash, get text me personally, and we'll set up a way to, to receive that. And some are saying, you're taking money. No, 
you're you're doing what God's called you to do. He says, I rebuke the devourer on your part when you do that. And I just want to let you know that we have we have that pathway possible for you to continue that so that you may continue to praise and rejoice the Lord for rebuking the devourer on your part. Amen. We will be back this weekend online. I miss the handshakes, the hugs. I miss the conversation like we normally do. But this, won't, this is just going to be a small amount of time. And praise the Lord, we'll be back to it, Lord willing. See you all then.